Buckle up, buttercup. This train's derailing. Right, let's talk Night Sleeper. It's a wild ride from start to finish. Heard of it? Maybe not. But trust me, it's something you won't forget once you do. It's the telly equivalent of that dodgy kebab you eat at 2 a.m. You know it's bad for you. But there's a morbid curiosity that keeps you coming back for more. You can't help but wonder what bizarre twist or turn will happen next. So, if you're looking for a show that's so ludicrously awful, it circles back to being entertaining, hop on. It's like watching a car crash in slow motion. You just can't look away. Just don't say I didn't warn you. It's a guilty pleasure, but one that comes with a heavy dose of cringe. This ain't no flea bag, love. Don't expect witty dialogue or deep character development. It's like someone chucked Bodyguard, Snowpiercer, and a year's worth of daytime soap operas into a blender, pressed pulse, and hoped for the best. And called it a masterpiece. But let's be real. It's more like a bizarre experiment gone wrong. Spoiler alert, it ain't a masterpiece. It's a hot mess, but one that's strangely captivating. It's a train wreck, all right. A chaotic, nonsensical, yet oddly fascinating train wreck. But oh, what a glorious train wreck it is. You might just find yourself laughing and cringing in equal measure. Picture this. You're on a sleeper train, trying to catch some much needed rest after a long day. The train is hurtling through the breathtaking Scottish Highlands. Sounds romantic, right? The picturesque scenery, the rhythmic clatter of the tracks. Wrong. This ain't no honeymoon express. There's a hostage situation brewing, a bomb threat looming, and whispers of a government conspiracy. Basically, all the makings of a Tuesday night in the chaotic world of Night Sleeper. Our protagonist, let's call her Sarah, because frankly I can't be asked to remember her actual name, is a psychologist with a troubled past and a knack for attracting danger. She's not just any psychologist. She's one with a history that could fill volumes. She's stuck on this runaway train with a cast of characters so stereotypical they could be extras in a regional theatre production of Murder on the Orient Express. Each one more suspicious than the last. We've got the gruff detective who seems to have seen it all, the shifty businessman with secrets of his own, and the mysterious old lady with a secret that could change everything. You get the picture. Throw in some dodgy CGI that looks like it was done on a budget, shaky camera work that makes you feel seasick, and enough plot holes to derail the actual train, leaving you questioning every twist and turn. And you've got yourself an evening of primetime television that promises to be as thrilling as it is bewildering. So buckle up and enjoy the ride if you can. Now, where do I even begin with the writing? It's like they hired a chatbot to churn out cliches and called it a day. Every other line is a melodramatic declaration of love, revenge, or some other equally over-the-top emotion. The dialogue, love, it's something else. It's like listening to a bunch of teenagers trying to sound profound after a GCSE drama class. You'll find yourself yelling at the screen, for God's sake, just say it normally. But hey, at least it's good for a laugh. Grab your mates, pour yourselves a stiff drink and get ready for an evening of unintentional comedy gold. Ah, the characters. Where do we even begin with this motley crew? It's like trying to find depth in a puddle on the tracks. Sarah, our leading lady, is about as interesting as a wet baguette. She's got the emotional range of a teaspoon and her only personality trait seems to be constantly traumatised. It's like watching paint dry. The supporting cast is no better. They're all so two-dimensional, they might as well be cardboard cutouts. There's the brooding love interest with a mysterious past, yawn. 
the comic relief sidekick who's more annoying than funny, and the villain who's so over-the-top evil he makes Cruella de Vil look like a saint. It's almost comical. Honestly, the only character I felt any connection with was the train itself. At least it seemed to be going somewhere, even if it was hurtling towards disaster. The train had more personality than the entire cast combined. It's a sad state of affairs when a piece of machinery outshines the human characters. But hey, at least the train was consistent. It had a destination, a purpose. Unlike the characters, who seemed to be wandering aimlessly through the plot. In the end, it was the train's journey that kept me watching, even if it was a journey towards disaster. Section 5. Genre Comparisons a distant cousin, twice removed. Night Sleeper tries to bill itself as a tense, high-stakes thriller in the vein of Bodyguard or 24. But let's be real, it's about as thrilling as watching paint dry. Sure, there's a ticking clock and a race against time, but the execution is so clunky and predictable that you'll probably guess the twists before they even happen and don't even get me started on the action sequences. Let's just say they make the Fast and Furious franchise look like a masterclass in realism. Look, if you want a genuinely gripping thriller, stick with the classics. Night Sleeper is more like the awkward, embarrassing cousin you try to avoid at family gatherings. Section 6 Laugh Out Loud Moments. Unintentionally hilarious. Now, despite all its flaws, Night Sleeper does have one redeeming quality. It's unintentionally hilarious. The dialogue is so bad, it's good. The acting is so over the top, it's comical. And the plot is so ridiculous, you can't help but laugh. There's one scene, in particular, that had me in stitches. It involves a dramatic showdown on the roof of the train, complete with slow motion running, cheesy one-liners, and a fight scene that wouldn't look out of place in a pantomime. It's moments like these that make Night Sleeper so wonderfully, terribly entertaining. Section 7. Final verdict. One for the so bad, it's good pile. So, what's the final verdict on Night Sleeper? Well, it's not good. In fact, it's pretty bloody awful. But here's the thing. Sometimes, awful can be entertaining in its own right. And Night Sleeper is nothing if not entertaining. It's a glorious train wreck of a show, full of cliches, melodrama, and unintentional comedy. If you're looking for a thought-provoking, well-written thriller, steer clear. But if you're in the mood for a good laugh and some truly terrible television, then hop aboard the Night Sleeper Express. Just don't say I didn't warn you. Section 8. Recommendations. If you liked this train wreck. OK, so you've binged Night Sleeper. And against all odds, you loved it. You're craving more cheesy dialogue, predictable plot twists, and characters that are as deep as a puddle. Well, my friend, you're in luck. There's a whole world of gloriously terrible television out there just waiting to be discovered. May I suggest Thunder in Paradise, a forgotten gem starring Hulk Hogan as a former Navy SEAL turned beach bum. Or perhaps Van Helsing, a supernatural drama with more wooden acting than a lumberyard. And for those who like their romance with a side of cringe, The Hunted is a must watch. Trust me, you won't be disappointed. Section 9 Parting Thoughts A Final Whistle Blow. Night Sleeper is a testament to the fact that sometimes even the worst ideas can make for strangely compelling television. It's a show that's so bad, it's good. A guilty pleasure that will have you laughing, cringing and yelling at the screen in equal measure. So, 
the next time you're looking for something to watch and your feet.